tickets in place of money to come and get items out of our general store. We oh, buy great. just a variety of stuff. Can I get a ticket number? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll have to come back to our general store. The general store, yeah. yeah. That sounds good. And she goes to your room to get you to come. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I have to go have to go roam out of their rooms. <laughs> They'd stay in the rooms all the time if you'd let them. Okay, I'm saying, yeah, all right, y'all gotta get out of this room. You gotta come up here and take part. It's a good uh, incentive to yes. To get, you know, out that's the good. word incentive. Incentive. That's what it is. Yes. Yes. Another word for it is bribery. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, uh, yeah, that is another. Yeah, another word is bribery. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> and the thing about it is, is if I can ever get them here, mm -hmm. they enjoy it. They have a good time. Yeah. But it's just you got to get them there first. Yeah. That's the thing. So that's the key. Well, uh, thank you. For, I want to thank Cindy very much for for having me. I was here back in the summer or I don't remember, August yeah. or September. But it's, it's great to be back, and uh, let's give a round of applause to Cindy. Yeah. So, uh, well, yeah. I'm just glad you're able to come back because everybody bragged on oh. you so after I came back. I said, well, how did y'all like Robert? Oh, we just enjoyed that scene. It was, it was so good. I bribed them to say but that. But did you? Yeah. Okay, you gave them tickets. I gave them golden tickets. The big the golden <laughs> so, so my name's Robert, and I play classical. I'm a classical and gospel pianist and I talk about the background of the music that's what I'll do today and I just tell you I'll tell you stories behind the pieces my own thoughts because um, you know people ask me do I sing well I well I try to but you don't want to hear it trust me <laughs> but the uh, music without words evokes things and for me it's stories or images and I try to share those with with um, you so I'm going to start with a story about me. So back a few years ago when the pandemic started, I watched some documentaries about violinists, or as we, they're properly called fiddle players. That's what we really, it's the same thing. And um, Yasha Heifetz, Nathan Milstein, all these great violinists of the past. And I said, that's it. You know, I'm sick of piano. It's too big anyway. I love the violin, and I'm going to switch instruments. So I came downstairs, and I told my wife, I'm going to play the violin. And she's a musician, too. She plays piano. And she said, OK, so uh, you can do it, but you'll have to practice. I know someone who did that, and they practiced like 10 hours a day. And in 15 years, you'll be OK at the violin. I said, you know, I I'm too lazy to do that. I can't do that. And we had our first kid, so I said, you know, I don't have that kind of energy. So plan B would be to play violin music on the piano, and that's what I'm doing. This is my plan B, arrangements. And the first piece is actually, it's a vocal piece, but you hear it on the, on the fiddle and the violin, you hear it a lot. And it's of all places it's from Japan. It's a folk song from Japan by a composer named Narita Tamezo. And it's called Song of the Seashore. It's a beautiful melody. And the sea in Japan is it's like Oak Island or something. It's surrounded by water. So it's, you know, a source of beauty, but it's also frightening, you know, because it's the ocean, can, there's tsunamis and things. But uh, the lyrics of this song, if I were to sing it, which I won't because I don't sing it, <laughs> they're about a man, you know, walking on the seashore thinking about his past. So it's a very nostalgic thing. So this is my sort of improvisation on that piece. We'll start with that. It's quite mellow. Thank you. 
Thank you. So now I'm going to play something called. Um, oh, of course. No, no problem. I'm going to play something called May Breezes by um, Felix Mendelssohn. May Breezes. So Mendelssohn was a German composer born in 1809. He lived a very short life, actually. He died at like 37 or 38 or so. It's just very short. Um, brilliant composer. He was a child prodigy. He was maybe even more than, than Mozart. You know, he just It's like he was born, he just started writing music. It just came naturally. Some people are like that. Um, <laughs> Others are not. I'm not. <laughs> but any, at any rate, um, Mendelssohn, you know, he's very sincere. This piece is it's similar to the last one in a way. It's very, it's like he wears his, uh, his heart on his sleeve, really. And why it's called May Breezes, because it really sounds like those warm, humid breezes in May. The accompaniment... <laughs> just sounds like that, those soft winds. So here it is. Um, it's originally a piano piece, but you very often hear it on the on the violin. There's a version for violin, and that's why I, why I learned it fits in with this violin theme here. So some more uh, crazy music. Well, this next one is not really crazy. So, so now I'm going to play a gavotte by Bach. It's originally for solo violin, and it's arranged by Rachmaninoff, the Russian composer. So, so you can call it Bachmaninoff, because it's Bach arranged by Rachmaninoff. Some people do that. So Bach, you know, was... Well, this a gavotte is a dance. It's a French Baroque dance. And at the same time, Bach was deeply, deeply religious. He was a church musician and organist, even taught Sunday school. It's one of his jobs. And um, there's some people who say that these solo violin pieces like this, that he had in mind, there's no proof for this, but I think it's a very interesting idea. He had in mind 
either some biblical scene or even a scene from Jesus' life in each of these. I still haven't figured out what this might be then. Maybe Palm Sunday is my first thought, but I don't know. You tell me maybe later. Um, so that's, but that's Bach, even though it's a dance, underneath it is the, is the deep, uh, you know, the faith, the religion. Rachmaninoff, who lived later, Bach lived from 1685 to 1750, it's going back, you know. Rachmaninoff lived in the early uh, 20th century. And I have a story about him. My grandfather met him. True story. So Rachmaninoff was, he was Russian, he was six and a half feet tall, never smiled, and he had a shaved head, just to give you an idea. Some people said he looked like an escaped convict. There was someone who said that, really. So my grandfather in the 30s, he's no longer, my grandfather is no longer here. He was an usher at a concert series in Richmond, Virginia. Um, and he had to stand by these double doors. And his boss said, do not let anyone cross through those doors. So five minutes later, sure enough, somebody did. So my grandfather pushed, pushed back, and then, so there was like a little fight, and then wham, the door was kicked open. And it was Rachmaninoff himself. And he spoke to my grandfather, you know what he said? You know, he said, get out of my way. <laughs> so I have a personal connection to the history of music, because Rachmaninoff told my grandfather to get out of his way. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I'm going to play this... Um, Gavat, it's a famous melody, man. Um, in the beginning, it's pretty close to the original Bach violin piece, but then as it progresses, it turns more and more, I think it turns more and more Russian sounding, so more and more Rachmaninoff. Because when you have an arrangement like this, it's like translating a book. A good translation is not word for word. It's it changes the, the words to fit the other language. So same here, it's the, Rachmaninoff adds a lot of things to the piece to make it a piano piece. So anyway, here it is.
for me? Oh, yeah, yeah. please Six come 20. in, yeah. You sit back there on okay. this aisle if you want to. Welcome, welcome. So that's the Bach. Um, now I'm going to play some Just pieces by... Um, oh, you want to go? Oh, okay. There's some seats here, too. If you want. Yeah, yeah no, no need to be shy. So, um, these pieces now are by Paganini, who was an Italian violinist, late 1700s, early 1800s. Paganini was actually, he was controversial because he was like a rock star of today. Even the way he, he looked, there's a photo of him, an early photo, and he's almost scary looking. He had this very thin, long face. and um, So he, he was, he divided a lot of people's opinions, you know, they were, at any rate, and a lot of it is just the, the way he played the violin and the style of music that he composed was so unusual that people were just flabbergasted, they were shocked by it. And this first one is a pretty famous one of his, it's called La Campanella, and it's from the second violin concerto. Now, this is a, arranged by Liszt, I'll talk about Liszt in a minute, but, um, Campanella means little bell. So you're gonna hear the little bell sound. In the you know, that's the bell, right? So Franz Liszt, the young Franz Liszt, heard Paganini play the violin. And he was so impressed and moved that he locked himself up in a room to practice. And he arranged Paganini's violin music for the for the piano and that's what I'm going to play now some of it not all of it uh, so we'll see this, this this piece is really crazy I'm just telling you it's very loud and it's just you know rambunctious so if this is not your thing by the end and I, I'll have to watch the time but by the end I will play the whole gospel set at the end so if, if classical is not your thing I always tell people but uh, anyway this is the um, La Campanella by Paganini arranged my list, so good luck to all of us because it's pretty wild.
reminds me of a mosquito or a fly buzzing in my ear because there's that part that that it really sounds like that it just it never goes away you know those those little guys so play a couple more Paganini's these are also a workout you know physical workout burn some calories I went to Waffle House this morning so it's good maybe um, this next one is called the arpeggio and when I learned it I couldn't figure out what it was for me like an image or a story for that last one it's the little bells and the and the mosquitoes I mean, it's just that's what it is um, but for this I couldn't get it so I was working on it it begins like like this this is also by Paganini so I asked my wife what do you what do you imagine and she said oh, very simple so we have two cats in addition to our two kids so we, I tell people we have four kids because the cats are you know and we have a kitten, and he has this toy that's like a merry-go-round. It's a ball and a string, and it goes around. And he whacks it, and it comes around, and he whacks it. And it just he just does this all day and all night. That's why I have these bags under my eyes. And so, you know, I can't hear it any other way now. That's the cat with the toy. I mean, that's it, it, because it goes up and then down, up, down, up, down. So, I'll attempt to do this crazy, also crazy piece. So. This is another Paganini arrangement. It's called La Chasse, which means the hunt. And what do you know? It's, those are uh, horn calls, French horn calls, which were used in Europe at that time for, for hunting. I guess it's before you could buy a, a duck whistle or something at, um, at Walmart. But, and it just, that idea is just reused and reused throughout this piece. You're going to hear it in different fashions. You know, you're going to hear it. And then like... That was a wrong note there, but... So, uh, I think that that's pretty much how I would, how I would describe this one. Uh, here it is. Paganini List.
tricky. So now I'm going to play something more familiar. Uh, this sort of borders on the gospel, not exactly, but this is an arrangement of Oh Danny Boy, the Londonderry Air. It's a classical piano version by Percy Granger. And why I said gospel is because there's a version of this same melody, different words. He looked beyond my fault is a gospel hymn. So um, at any rate, I hope that this version, you can hear the tune because it's got a lot of tricky things going on, but there is that recognizable tune in there. So here is Oh Danny Boy, Londonderry Air, arranged by Percy Granger. Oops. that the words to that are so uh, heartbreaking. They're, they, I think it's not clear what it exactly is about, but it's probably a father singing to his son. It's an Irish folk tune, you know. Father singing to his son who's about to go off to the First World War to fight. So I'm um, going to play a couple more short, uh, shortish, short-ish classical pieces. So this one is a familiar one. This is a... All of these, by the way, like, you hear them on the violin a lot. That's, they're not necessarily originally for violin, but you'll hear it on violin one. So this is Dvorak, the humorist. Dvorak was a Czech composer. You know, he, um, he loved folk music and even American folk music. He came to America for a, a time. And in his music, in the New World Symphony, he has Native American, you know, African American melodies in that symphony. So. Um, this humoresque, humoresque means some, a piece that's humorous, and it's not necessarily like a laugh out loud funny, but it's lighthearted, but also slightly sad to reflect, a, nostalgic would be the right word. So here is the um, Dvorak uh, humorous. <laughs> Thank you. 
So it's so warm. And, um, I actually know, a, I won't tell you the whole story, but I know another pianist who absolutely hates Dvorak. And I had this sort of uh, talk with him, but I, I asked him why, and he said that, oh, well, you know, Dvorak was, Dvorak, first of all, he was a good person. He was not an arrogant show off like Paganini was. <laughs> he was. Um, and so this friend said, this, not, he was not my, my friend, but this pianist said that, um, he thinks that Dvorak's music reminds him of a farm. He said he can almost smell the farm. And I told him at the end, I said, now you've given me two reasons to love him even more. Number one, I love farms and rural areas. And number two, the fact that you really dislike him so much means to me that there's something great there. <laughs> so sometimes strong reactions show something. This is a very short piece by Albanis, who is a Spanish composer. Um, in this time, the late 1800s, classical composers were looking at folk music for their inspiration. And they, many still do, because we have country music. Or that's folk music, really. And good music comes from folk music. And there's a lot of good things. So Albanese really found himself when he started to write Spanish flamenco-sounding pieces. You know, flamenco music is sort of a mix of what's from Spain, the south of Spain it's very much connected to the Arabic influence because Spain was Moorish, it was Arabic in the Middle Ages. And so there's that, that influence in there from the Middle East. Uh, this is called Malagueña, which means a woman from Malaga. It's a city in southern Spain. 
And Malaga is one of the capitals of flamenco guitar playing and singing. So you hear the guitar here. That's clearly the plucked guitar. And then the left hand is like a, a singer, you know. You hear, how that sounds a little bit like Arabic music too. There's that Spain is a melting pot, or it was. So here is um, Malagueña by Isaac Albanese. Southern Gospel improvisations. This last piece is by French composer Saint Sans, Camille Saint Sans. It's called Etude en forme de valse, or Study in the Form of a Waltz. It's sort of a waltz, and it's sort of not a waltz. Saint Sans was a very interesting and odd character. I'll tell you about him. He was a not only a musician, he was an archaeologist, or a paleontologist, I think archaeologist. Um, mathematician, philosopher, the list goes on and on. He was even an animal rights activist. I, I didn't even know they had that in the 1800s, but apparently. And he, he just did everything. I don't know how. And there's a story about him. He, he was 10 years old, and he gave his first recital in Paris. Long recital. And at the end, he said to the audience, 10-year-old, uh, which of the 32 Beethoven sonatas would you like me to play? I have them all memorized. I mean, what a spoiled brat to say. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. If, I, if, anyway, this piece is, this piece is a lot of fun. I think it would work perfectly for a silent movie or as the background to a Bugs Bunny cartoon because it goes between being very, uh, like tender almost. <laughs> Being almost violent sometimes. <laughs> the, the 
the changes of character are very extreme. They're just very sudden. So here it is. I think it's, a, it's ultimately it's a humorous piece. So here it is.
It's a little quicker now because I have some tricks, but when I was younger, it would take a long time. But th there, are, there are tricks, you know, you patterns, and you remember the patterns, and then, yeah. So that's pretty much, pretty much it. Um, I mean, I had a few, if I can, play a couple of gospel. I don't sure. know about the time. Sure, I'd love but, to hear some. All right, so uh, got a lot of, I mean, I could do, do you know, Why Me, Lord, by Chris Christopherson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do that in a country gospel style, so here it is. Okay, I, I don't sing, but I just improvise with it, so.
short ones and then you know this I'll do a also sort of country version of um, uh, in the garden so <laughs> So uh, I'll do a short version of Jesus Loves Me, This I Know in a somewhat upbeat Southern Gospel style. So. <laughs>
like it. Do your children play? Oh, not yet. They're uh, one and three. So they're a little small for that. <laughs> no. I bet they will, though, don't yeah, you? I, I hope, yeah. I mean, I'd like, if possible, I don't know if I'm overstaying here. I could do one more. This sure, is a, a really one upbeat spin. one. So, um, yeah, I want to close on a up, real upbeat note. This is Albert E. Brumley, uh, Jesus Hold My Hand. It's a very upbeat, barnstormer, old time country gospel type thing. Uh, so, he wrote I'll Fly Away, of course. And this is similar in, in the character. So, I want to know when God gave you this time. Well, thanks. At like, what age? Oh, well, I think, you know, honestly, it came later. Like, I was joking about Saint Saul's, how he was 10 years old. And, um, I didn't have that. I, I had to work a lot, starting in my teenage years. And then, and then it, I guess it came then, later, you know. But, like, I wasn't a child prodigy, you know, so. Do you but, have a degree in music? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where did you go to school? Um, Manhattan School of Music in New York. Then I was studying in Texas with a Russian piano. I'm actually, I'm half Russian. My mom's Russian, so okay. my dad's uh, Virginian, <laughs> Southeast Virginia, <laughs> 10th generation Virginia, so. Uh, Pat, that sounds like your son, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Probably. Pat's son's married to a Russian. Oh, oh really? Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> wow, that's, so, um, yeah, and, and I studied in, all the way, I got a doctorate in piano, and then I taught. I taught at universities too, but that wasn't my calling. I, I, this is I'm doing this now, and I'm liking it a heck of a lot more. So <laughs> enjoy playing for you. But um, well, we want you well, to come back. I will. Oh, I would love to. I'm uh, somewhat local. Maybe it's not that far. Okay. So, uh, well, I'll close up with this one thing, and because I, I want to leave on an upbeat spirit, uh, with an upbeat spirit. So. This is Jesus Hold My Hand, and thank thank you very much. Thank you, Cindy, and thanks for letting me play kind of long. No, I really enjoyed it. Well, I, I, I took piano, likewise. but I was, oh, I, uh, yes, but I, mm -hmm. I hated practice. And oh, well, <laughs> me too. I, <laughs> My mom had to just so beg. <laughs> yeah, I took nine years, but you'd never know. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> I know, but you'd never know. Oh, and I'm I hadn't sorry. played in years, so. Well, you have a piano. But right I thoroughly here. enjoyed this. Oh, well, thank, thank you. Uh, Thank you all. It's it's great to be back. I enjoyed. It. And I remember last time you had said that there had been a fire. Yes, here. we we did. We had a fire, and and the reason I wasn't here um, mm -hmm. is because I've been diagnosed with breast cancer. So I think I was either having a procedure done uh -huh. that day. I remember because I didn't get your check. You know, I had to uh -huh. mail it to uh -huh. you because I didn't intend on not being here. Right, right, right. But it, I was either at chemo or I was getting something done, but mm -hmm. but I'm okay, I'm doing all right. Oh, good, good. I, I went this morning and had my chemo and came to work, so I'm good, but yeah, that's why I wasn't here, so. But yes, yeah. but our room, we've got our room fixed and, and actually it's someone's good. living in it now and mm -hmm. no one was hurt, so yes. and it was just confined in one room, so we were lucky. She keeps her smile on her face. <laughs> oh yeah, Cindy's great. Well, you gotta have, you gotta keep a smile on your face. Yeah, you have to. You have to be positive. Mm -hmm. Well, wow, that's, I hadn't realized all that. Well, close up with this upbeat one, and because I think gospel, I like when it's upbeat. Yes. We should be, you know. Anyway, so. <laughs>
great. Thank you very, very much. Well, thank you for coming so much. We've thoroughly enjoyed it. And we do want you to come back. I would love to, yeah. Somebody missed it. Oh, it's okay. I can't see good, y'all. Well, I'm sorry. You missed a good performance.